Hey, Josh here. If you've been inside the done template, you've probably seen the builder widget that we have in the bottom right hand side of the screen. I want to just take a couple minutes to talk about what that widget is, why it's there and talk about how you can use it while building your application, or even if you wanted to replicate it and bring that type of experience to your other apps, how you can go about doing that. So the builder widget itself is designed to be a opportunity for you to explore the data that's set inside of your application. When I'm navigating the application, you're gonna see when you hover over certain things like the title of one of your app pages, you're gonna see a little pulse on the icon and it also will turn green and sit green until you hover over it. You're gonna see the same thing when you hover over, let's say a task row. If you're on your team task and you also have our individual component here for the user, you might see that and you're gonna see them get outlined in the green effect telling you which page is selected. If you want to explore the whole app page, you can always hover over done as well at the top left. and It'll show you just that. And so what's occurring when we hover over a unique new page, let's say a task, we're going to give you the current parent and root page relative to the page that you've just hovered. So when I hover over task, my current page is my app page task list row. The current record is the specific task I've set into that page. And then the variables that exist there are all the variables that come from that data collection. We give you the name of that variable, as you can see right here. This is the Unix timestamp of this one. There's no due date on it, so there's no timestamp. You can see the assigned to user, all those details, and even some ex additional variables like things that get created automatically in a repeating list, like our array index variable to tell you this is the exact spot. This row sits inside of this repeating list. Zero is the first, one is the second, and so on and so forth. You can also see variables that you create along the way. So if you have a variable that you create, you'll see that value. If you refresh, actually, it's going to give you the updated value at that moment. So you can see and visualize the changes of the variables over time. You're going to be able to see your variables in a array structure if you want as well. If you're comfortable with JSON, awesome. If you're not comfortable with JSON, it's a really easy way to just cut your teeth on understanding that JSON really is not code. It's simply a different way to structure data. It is the equivalent of looking at a spreadsheet. Instead of seeing it in a grid format, you see it in a linear format where each column is this value right here. And then each row is this value right here. And these get grouped into these things called JSON objects inside of an array. So if you had a big spreadsheet of data, you'd have one of these that exist for every single row inside of a database like in a spreadsheet. And so that's our current page and parent is always going to be the page directly above that existing page you've selected. So the parent of our task page is in this case, our team task page. If I went to our component for individual user here, the parent of our individual component here is actually then our task page. So I could see our task list row page as the parent of this nested component right here. And then the root page is always the page directly assigned to the URL of the page that you're on. In this case, we will always see app home as the root page. Sometimes you may see the app home as the parent and the root page since its relationship to this page is the same. As you're learning builder, this is gonna be a great tool to help you visualize the data flow. And as you build troubleshoot and solve, you can continue to use this for your application and done and even reuse and recycle this structure for other applications if you choose to.